Hello, my name is Paul Schramm, and I am the Climate Science Team Lead at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And I'll be talking today about the human health effects of climate change and perspectives from the CDC. So first I'll start with an overview of the health effects of climate change and then move into activities of CDC's climate health program. And then finally end with a variety of tools and resources that we have. So why climate and health? Why worry about this topic? Why is CDC doing something on this? Um, well, according to our center director, uh, Patrick Bricey from the National Center for Environmental Health, climate change is the biggest environmental health challenge of our time. Um, and then also there's a statement here from the Lancet Journal that an unprecedented, ch unprecedented challenge demands an unprecedented response. And it will take the work of the 7.5 billion people currently alive to ensure that the health of a child born today is not defined by a changing climate. So it's recognized as a, a major topic and uh, CDC has funding from Congress to work on this issue. So if you're not familiar with what the health effects of climate change are, um, some of them are laid out on this slide. I know at Goldschmidt, uh, we have a lot of geoscientists who maybe have not worked too much on the human health aspects uh, of this issue. Um, I have a background in geoscience, a master's of science um, in uh, geoscience from the University of Notre Dame, but then I also went on into public health after that with a master's of public health from Emory University. So I see a lot of things that overlap between the geoscience community and the public health community, and climate change is one area where that happens. So I know this slide is a little busy and, and pretty colorful, but if you start from the center, those are the climate impacts. And as you go out from there, around the outside, you can see the various health impacts. So I won't go through all of them. If you're interested in the specific human health impacts of climate change, a good place to start is the National Climate Assessment. Uh, for example, the fourth National Climate Assessment has a human health chapter that outlines uh, a lot of the things that you see on this slide. But just to highlight a few, um, Heat-related illness is a pretty straightforward one. As temperatures rise around most parts of the globe, we see heat-related illness, um, heat-related deaths, um, things like uh, changing ecosystems affecting mosquitoes and ticks, which can lead to vector-borne disease, or, for example, changes in aeroallergens like pollen as plant phenology changes and uh, pollen exposure changes. Um, and then, of course, of course, there are mental health impacts to all of these. So this isn't even complete. Um, for example, wildfires are not on here, um, but if you want more information on this, I would encourage you to check out our website, which I'll have a link to later, um, or the National Climate Assessment. I also wanted to mention that climate change cuts across all areas of public health. Um, so CDC has a lot of different centers. It's the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, um, and climate change cuts across many of them. Um, so it really is cross-disciplinary, even within public health. And just some of the areas that it affects are here, such as uh, Center for Injury Prevention and Control, um, Worker Health, um, so CDC's National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, and a lot of other areas here, including global health, surveillance, um, vector-borne disease. So that was the bad news <laughs> that climate change has been affecting human health. It is affecting human health. Um, mostly negatively. Um, but the good news is we have a program at CDC and a lot of people around the country are working on this uh, topic with our technical assistance and funding. So CDC's Climate and Health Program has been funded since 2009. We just celebrated our 10th anniversary. We are funded directly by Congress. And you can see our vision that we are the national leader in empowering communities to protect human health from a changing climate. We have three strategies to accomplish this. The first is to build the evidence base. So climate health is still a pretty new field. So building the evidence base here means conducting research, um, and it can also mean uh, literature reviews um, and looking at the effectiveness of certain interventions to prove that they work for protecting health. The second strategy is expanding capacity, and we do that uh, by providing funding to health departments. Um, and the third is to tell the story. So that's the communication aspect and the collecting of best practices. 
So I mentioned that we build capacity around the country. These are all of the different jurisdictions that we have funded. Um, not all of them are still funded. Some of them are shorter projects, but most of them on here are still funded. We fund 16 states and two cities directly through our Climate Ready States and Cities Initiative. And then there are a number of other uh, jurisdictions, tribes, territories, cities, and counties that we fund mostly through agreements with partners that we work with. Um, so, for example, we work with the National Indian Health Board uh, to provide funding and technical assistance to tribes. So what do these different jurisdictions do? Well, we created a framework called the BRACE framework, which stands for Building Resilience Against Climate Effects, and it is a five-step framework um, for climate health adaptation. So you can see it starts with step one, anticipating climate impacts and assessing vulnerabilities. So basically a jurisdiction will look at what is our past climatology, how has it been changing, and how is it projected to change in the future? And then how will that impact the people within our jurisdiction? What are the geographic and population vulnerabilities? Um, so for example, a jurisdiction might see hey, heat has been increasing. We've already been having increasing emergency room visits uh, from during heat waves in the summer, uh, and they might conduct a vulnerability assessment to see which specific neighborhoods are more vulnerable to heat. They then move on to uh, step two of BRACE, which is projecting the, the disease burden. This is using climate models to look forward at what uh, health might look like in the future under a changing climate. So this can be very simple, um, especially in jurisdictions with limited resources. It can be qualitative. It can say, you know, using my heat example, it could say, hey, we're expecting more heat waves in the future. Uh, let's prepare for that. Or it can be very technical. Uh, there are some places that have done, for example, projections of future asthma rates uh, based on how temperature will affect ozone in their jurisdiction. Um, so it can be uh, very quantitative and um, planning out for policy purposes. Uh, after this, the third step is to assess public health interventions. And this is the, well, what do we do about it? Um, so it involves looking at what is feasible for that jurisdiction. Um, so for heat, it might be something like implementing cooling centers or providing air conditioning to low-income households. Um, so jurisdictions in this step will analyze the different possible interventions and look to the literature for evidence of their effectiveness. Um, step four is actually developing the plan and implementing it and implementing these adaptation and intervention activities. Uh, this can be a standalone climate and health plan or it can be incorporating health into, uh, say, a city or a county's existing climate adaptation plan that previously didn't incorporate health. And then it's listed as the final step, but really it has to happen throughout the process, and that's evaluation. So evaluating impact and improving quality of activities is something that's built in from step one uh, to really be able to tell if what's being implemented is working. And I wanted to mention that the BRACE framework is adaptable, it's flexible. The health impacts of climate change are very local. So someplace uh, along the coast might be worried about coastal flooding, uh, while a different state might be thinking more about wildfires or heat waves or vector-borne disease. Um, you know, it might be a different uh, area where ticks are a problem or mosquitoes are a problem. So BRACE is not prescriptive as to what climate hazards have to be addressed. Uh, it's meant to be very flexible. And this is just one example of how a jurisdiction adapted the BRACE framework. This is from the Swinomish Nation, um, a tribal nation in northwestern United States. And they adapted the BRACE framework, which you see on the left, into their version, which you see on the right. And they did this by working with the community to incorporate all of the values-driven data that you see there in the center. So this is something that we definitely encourage. And there are a lot of other examples where local jurisdictions, um, especially smaller communities that um, don't have a lot of resources, um, have implemented BRACE in novel ways. And if you'd like to see some examples of how places around the country have implemented this framework, um, you can look at these two documents. 
Uh, we did these with the American Public Health Association. There's the original version from 2015 and the updated version from 2018. These are on our website, or if you just Google adaptation in action, um, these documents will come up and they give examples of different strategies that have been used by jurisdictions around the country. So it may seem like the only thing CDC is doing based on what I've told you is supporting uh, local health departments. And that's certainly a big part of what we do, but there's a lot more than that. And this slide is uh, meant to incorporate some of the research that we do. So on the left are some of the things that we have been focusing on over the past few years including doing research on heat, flooding, pollen, wildfire, drought, cold, and air pollution. And we also cover bigger topics. So for example, uh, projects and activities on climate and health evaluation, climate and health communication, and coordination across the federal government. So CDC is a health agency. We work very closely with agencies that are more on the climate or data side of things. So for example, we work with EPA all the time, with NASA, NOAA, National Institutes of Health, US Forest Service, um, and CDC is one of the co-chairs of the Federal Climate Change and Human Health Group. So we do a lot of coordination, um, making sure that we're really synergizing and working together um, uh, climate health work across the federal government. So I wanna cover now a few tools and resources that we have available um, that you might find interesting. This is our website, cdc.gov slash climate and health. So everything that we've produced uh, is on here, recorded webinars, uh, videos, different data sets, tools, guidance, trainings, PDFs, they're all on here, social media toolkit. So if you're looking for anything related to climate health, this is a good place to start. And I'll go through just a few examples. So I thought this might be of particular interest, uh, especially to the Goldschmidt audience. This is CDC's National Environmental Public Health Tracking Network. Uh, so the tracking network is another part of CDC that works with states to collect data um, and make that data publicly available. And it's all data on environmental health. So it's, it's essentially a public portal. You can download maps, you can download the data, you can display the maps, uh, you can do like what I'm showing here and animate a map. Uh, there's a lot of different options there. So we worked with them to create a climate change content area, which includes a wide variety of metrics, uh, data on flood vulnerability, uh, historic and projected precipitation, temperature, uh, a lot of health data like heat related illness. Um, so this is a unique portal that combines environmental data, climate data, meteorological data on all different time scales, uh, and combines that with health data, such as uh, emergency room visits for heat, uh, different health data um, related to heat vulnerability uh, based on demographics. So this is a good, a good way to uh, download that data and visualize the data, really connecting that environmental data with the health data. Um, so it plays on CDC's strengths and we've worked closely with the National Weather Service, National Center for Environmental Information, uh, and a lot of other agencies that have this historic and projected climate data to help get it on this portal. Um, and it's all available at least at the county level for the United States, and in some cases down to the census tract level. We also have a cross-sectoral guide for climate and health. Um, so this is designed to encourage collaboration. So climate change, uh, as you know, crosses a wide variety of sectors, and we work primarily with the health sector. So this is designed to help make those connections between the health sector and 10 other sectors that you see here. Um, so to encourage public health to work with, for example, uh, at the agriculture sector or uh, land management, forestry, um, utilities, sustainability. Uh, so if you're interested in that kind of cross-sectoral uh, collaboration on climate and health, this is a good place to start. We also have a wide variety of technical documents for health departments. These are just a few. Um, we have more than a dozen now that are meant for health departments um, and a handful of others that are also designed for health departments to share with the general public. So these again are all on our website. Um, they range from how to use climate models to uh, how to project climate related disease burden down to the level of actually including 
uh, code to be able to do that uh, in different software programs. So that's what I have for you. I hope that was informative. Um, and again, I encourage you to visit our website, uh, cdc.gov slash climate and health. Thank you.